Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about modular multiplication tables. You've probably seen images of these on the internet, but maybe you didn't know what they were. Today we're going to try and gain an intuition for understanding how a simple rule can make such complex and beautiful shapes. First, let's think about how these are constructed. Take a circle and then divide the circumference into any number of points, much like a clock face. We'll use 12 points to continue that analogy. Then you choose a multiplier. Let's choose two. We connect every point to that number times two, one to two, two to four, and so on. When we get to seven, seven times two is 14, which doesn't appear on the table. So we connect it to two, since 14 mod 12 is two. Every modular multiplication table has two variables that identify it. The first is the modulus, or the number of ticks around the outside. We'll call this variable m. In our example here, the modulus is 12. The other variable is the multiplier. In this example, our multiplier is two. We'll denote the multiplier by the letter a. The question is, what happens as we increase m but keep a the same? You can see that as m is increased, the straight lines begin to approximate a really neat curve. This is called a cardioid. It comes from the Latin root meaning heart, just like cardiovascular. The cardioid actually shows up in mathematics all the time. You may have seen it in the Mandelbrot set or something else. The question we have to ask is why does it show up here? What does the cardioid have to do with modular multiplication tables? Well, in a later video, I'll show an explicit proof for the cardioid's appearance. But today, we're just going to work on building an intuition for understanding how these are connected. But first, let's look at some more A's. So you see that each time A is increased, the number of lumps on the inside of the table is also increased. This means that the number of lumps is always one less than A. When I first saw this pattern, I was utterly amazed. It's crazy that such a simple rule can make such cool shapes. So the question is, why does this happen? Let's go back to the cardioid to figure this out. So there are a few different ways to construct a cardioid. Uh, if you're familiar with polar functions, the general equation r equals 2a times 1 plus cosine of theta will give you a cardioid along with some other polar equations. Um, you could invert a parabola around its focus if you're into that. Uh, you could take a circle and draw every other circle that has a, a center on the circumference of the first and intercepts the same point. It's kind of confusing to explain, but hopefully this visual will uh, help you guys understand. But the way that we're going to be focusing on is this. Take two circles of equal size. Roll one around the other one, tracking a point on the outside of the outer circle. There you go. <laughs> Voila, a cardioid. So the, qu the important question to ask with this is how many times does the outer circle turn around? Let's count. Once, twice. But the outer circle only touches the inner circle once. This is the key to understanding what happens with our modular multiplication table. So if we look at our modular multiplication table, let's say that there are m points around the outside. The point where the outer circle touches the inner is right here at m divided by 2. And remember that we're multiplying each point by 2. So if we say m divided by 2 times 2, we get m. 
and m is directly across the circle from m, m divided by 2, so this creates a diameter, and it's the only diameter in the circle. It's kind of like the point where the line turns around. You see the line grows up to m divided by 2 and then shrinks back down to m. Okay, let's apply this same logic to our 3 times table. The shape that this makes is called a nephroid. It comes from the Latin root meaning kidney, so <laughs> slightly less appealing than the heart that the cardioid comes from. But the nephroid is from the same family of curves as the cardioid, so we can construct it in a very similar way. Okay, so this time we take two circles where one circle is half the size as the other. If we roll the smaller around the bigger and track a point on the outside, guess what? We get a nephroid. So let's ask the same questions of our nephroid as we asked of the cardioid. How many times does the outer circle turn around? So let's see, it starts facing to the right, so that's one turn, two turns, and three turns. But we see that it only touches the inner circle twice. Once a quarter of the way around, and once three quarters of the way around. So if we look at our modular multiplication table, here are two circles. The two points that the outside one touches the inside correspond to m divided by 4 and 3m divided by 4. And remember that we're multiplying by 3 here, so m divided by 4 times 3 is 3m divided by 4, directly across from the original point, and that creates a diameter. And then we have 3m divided by 4 times 3 is 9m divided by 4, which is the same as m divided by 4 since we're working in modulus, and that creates a diameter too. And so these are the only two points that when multiplied by 3 create a diameter. Crazy, right? <laughs> okay, let's compile all of the variables that we've looked at thus far. We have the number of times the outer circle rotates. That's the same as a for both tables. We have the number of times it touches the inner circle and the number of lumps in the curve. These are the same and are both a minus 1. And then we have the ratio of the two circles. For the 2 times table, that's 1 to 1, and for the 3 times table, that's 1 to 2. Let's look at some more rolling circles. Here, the smaller circle has one-third the radius of the bigger. It makes four rotations and creates a curve with three lumps, like the four times table. In this one, the outer circle is one-fourth the size of the inner circle. It makes five rotations and creates a circle with four lumps, like the five times table. You may be wondering why the number of rotations is always one more than the number of times it touches the inner circle. Well, you can see that if the smaller circle turns around once, it never touches the inner circle. This is how our moon works with the Earth. That's why we only ever see one side of the moon. If it rotates twice, it uses one of those rotations in making a circumference and then touches the inner circle with the other. In general, one rotation is always spent going around the inner circle. So that's why the number of rotations the outer circle makes, minus one, is the number of times it touches the inner circle. So to summarize, we have the modular multiplication tables and the rolling circles. And these two very different actions actually make the same curves. The A in the modular multiplication table is the same as the number of times the outer circle rotates with rolling circles. And the number of diameters in the modular multiplication table, same as the number of lumps in the curve, is equivalent to the number of times the outer circle touches the inner. And lastly, the ratio of the two circles is always a minus 1 to 1, a minus 1 being the bigger circle. So that's all I have for you guys today. Stay tuned for some other cool things with these images. We'll be proving why the cardioid shows up in the two times table and 
looking at how these particularly neat modular multiplication tables are constructed. As always, thank you all for watching and don't forget to subscribe.